Well, hello, hello. Good morning, wherever you're at, or good afternoon, good evening. It looks like we've got somebody from Azerbaijan, and uh, I think that's all I'm seeing right now. So let me know where you're watching from, um, and let me switch over everything here. All right, welcome. Uh, good to see you this morning. Um, we are going to build out this pricing component, and if you've watched my live streams in the past, you know that I just kind of pick a project, and I try to do it live in front of you, and uh, that way you get to see my process, and we can kind of work on it together, and uh, that's the way I prefer to do these because it's it's more realistic to how uh, coding actually goes. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I think my internet is kind of in and out a little bit, but uh, that is kind of the way it's been going recently. This is probably the last stream I'm going to do before I move, and I'm hoping at that point I'll have... A slightly better internet connection so let me go ahead and move everything over and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here uh, all right let me see a couple comments here taking your astro 3.5 or hours course awesome hey glad it's been enjoyable hey from india welcome 415 sounds like maybe europe something like that um so all right well let's go ahead and jump right in i do have the uh my VS code open to the project. And then I've got just a Chrome window open. I have literally not looked at this at all. So let's go ahead and see, is there anything here I need to know? Make it look as close as possible. Okay, so I'm good with that. Um, let's, I think what I'm gonna do is just use HTML and CSS. So we're gonna try to keep it pretty simple. Um, and uh, we'll just, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so as I look at this, uh, the actual image itself here, and I think I've got this over here too, maybe. And let's see, I've got mobile version as well. Okay, so we've got a couple things to think about. Uh, obviously, different colors, uh, spacing things to think about. Um, this little cool toggle switch we can do. Okay, so I think my instinct is to make this thing a range slider and make it go from whatever the smallest amount is to whatever the biggest amount is. And that way we get like keyboard focus events. And then I can use this as like a little dummy handle that you can grab, but you could also click along the line. It should move it as well. So I think that's my in instinct here. This would be a checkbox. The rest of this, I mean, this would be a button down here. And then the rest of this is, is pretty basic. Now, if I'm just going to use normal HTML, CSS and maybe just normal JavaScript. The only thing we'll need to do is I'm guessing there's like a yearly and a monthly. Uh, do they show that? Active states, okay. Monthly, yearly. Okay, so it doesn't really update. 16 a month. It just says 16 a month no matter what. Okay, so I thought, I thought maybe I had to change the actual phrasing here, but I guess not. That would make sense though, wouldn't it? Now let's just actually read this and see if there's anything else uh, I need to do. Oh wait, here we go. Corresponding monthly totals. 10,000 page views, 100,000 page views, 16 per month. Um, huh. Oh, okay, as they slide this. Okay, I got it. So there's actually like little segments where you can click to. Mm. So if it's above a certain amount, then I'd switch this out. So how do I want to do this? Um, maybe I should do React. Not sure. All right. Good evening, United Arab Air Emirates. Welcome. All right. Let's go ahead then. Um, trying to figure out how I want to do this. Let Let me just start by creating a new Vite project. I mean, React is probably going to be the easiest when it comes to actually dragging this along a slider. Maybe what? Yeah, maybe let's do that. Um, yeah, so let's do let's do that. So we'll say uh, create Vite at latest, and I'll call this something like uh, interactive uh, pricing component. Oops, pmpm PM, create Vite at latest. Latest interactive, oops, pricing component. Hopefully, we'll see, there we go. Good morning, welcome. Uh, React, um, let's just do normal React. I'll use SWC though. Uh, interactive, gonna let me autocomplete, there we go, PMPM, I. 
and then we'll get this up and running. All right. Um, if this thing wants to do anything, we're going to get started. Um, let's kind of look at the style guide and at least get started here while this is thinking about it doing something. Uh, so we've got the full slider bar. So they're actually giving me the colors and what they apply to. That's good. Slider background. Now there is some like this little drop shadow thing I need to think about. Um, so like I normally like to do, I'll probably strip out the HSL from these. Uh, let's see. This isn't even HSL itself. <laughs> All right. So there's my white uh, blue main. Lots of colors. So are these just different variations of the same? No, I guess they're not. All right, so we've got about 5,000 colors. Uh, typography doesn't say to do anything. Oh, here we go, down here. So font size is 15 up here. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. Um, and that way we've got this ready. So let me paste this back over this way. Eight and 600, okay. And this still hasn't done anything. So PMPM install. There we go. I'll get rid of all this stuff. And we need six and eight hundred, so let me go ahead and grab those six hundred, eight hundred. And uh, let's go ahead and just add this eventually. Let's see, pmpm PM run dev. So inside here, this folder we just created, I'm going to go ahead and change this out to say uh, interactive pricing component. And then I'll paste in this right here. Uh, Let's see, anything else I want to do here? I don't think so. Let me grab this too. We'll drop this, I guess, right here. Okay, so we've got something going on. Um, let me go ahead and close this down. And let's see, let's go inside here. And let's replace this. Don't I have, yeah, right there. Let's see, all this needs to, oops, <laughs> get out of here. Okay, so I think we're good there. Um, let me just double check. I thought I saw a couple of comments come in. Uh, which extends are you to expose colors? It's called color highlight, I think. Um, wonder if you'd be willing to share the spotlight. I don't really listen to music while I code, so I'm, I might be a, a strange person there, but it distracts me, so I usually don't. As you can tell, I'm not even listening to it right now while you are. Um, so... Sorry, <laughs> it can't be helped there. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so let me go ahead now, and um, we got six and 800. Let's just kind of declare some basic stuff for CSS. Um, is this what I should be doing with my time right now? Probably not, but let's do it anyhow. Let's leave all that stuff. That's fine. Uh, whatever, that's fine. Uh, let's see. I'll just get rid of all this. Okay. So let me come below here and we're going to declare a section for colors. And here I'm just going to paste in each of these one after the other. And we'll come back around to these. Let me see what I've left on this clipboard. Um, if you're curious, because I get this, I get asked this a lot because I use this a lot. This is a, a clipboard extension or program for Mac called um, Pastebot. And so you can copy stuff and then paste it back in the same order you copied it. Um, so it's super helpful, especially when you're templating stuff out. All right, so let's go ahead and maybe what we should do is start by actually getting it operational and then we can style it after that. I've said that before and I'm not very good at doing it, so uh, we'll see what happens here. So let me strip out all of this right here. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Get rid of this for now too, although yeah, let's get rid of this for now as well. Actually, I think I'm gonna, as I drag that slider, just as it updates the value, I can then, yeah, as it updates the value, I can then just check the value each time. So I think that's that might be what I'd do, but I guess I can use a use ref for that too. So maybe we don't need this. Okay, let's go ahead and um, let me open this back up. Anything else I need from here? I guess I need to know this is 15. Um, so let me just put this in here so I can remember. 
and then I think I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, um, let me open up the design, and we'll look at the mobile here too. And usually they give you this text, so maybe I should look in here. Yeah, here we go, okay. So let me grab this, and we'll just kind of grab each of these things one after the other. Font synthesis, I don't even remember. I think it like it's like how the font renders it, but... I don't know, I'll just leave it in. Um, that's something on my long list of things to check into at some point. <laughs> so um, There's a bunch of font properties that are fairly new, or at least new to me, and so, but uh, I'm not sure offhand. Okay, uh, let me move this over. And I'm guessing I've got an image here too, actually, right? Images, background pattern, favicon, Check, slider, circles. Okay, so let me move all of these things into assets over here. And I think I'm good with that. Okay, let's go ahead and template this stuff out just to kind of get something on the page here. So this would be, see this is gonna be in this top section. Let's just create a div here. I'll eventually come back and add classes and stuff like that. But for now, this is probably gonna be I guess it's an H1 because it's the only, the main thing on the page. Uh, so we'll grab that and then we'll have a paragraph below that with page views. What was that for? Oh, that was all this stuff. Okay, so sign up. Let's see, this is just like this. Okay, and then below here, um, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Let's paste this back in, and then this says required. Not sure why that didn't copy out. Um, okay, I think that's good. These might be on separate lines. Um, so it looks like they are. So let's just add a little line break in here. Um, what else do I have in here? So much per month. Oh, that's below that. But I think on desktop it was above it. Okay, so how do I want to set this up? Um, I could just do like a grid and decide where it lands on the grid. Maybe that's what I'll do. All right, because it's not going to be easy to do that with Flexbox, at least in my thinking. So let's go ahead and just create a little div down here. This will be like card. I'm assuming I'll call it something like that. And then this will be, we'll call this like slider wrapper or something. And in here we'll have um, however much per month. And then I'll have, let's see, an input with a type of range. And we'll call this page views. And same thing here, page views. And what else do I want this to say? Um, I guess this doesn't need anything, but I will probably end up wrapping this. We can put that little fake uh, icon in here. So we'll call this like range wrapper and let's see what else i think i'm good with that but up above here i'll have another paragraph that says it's supposed to be the 100 100k page views or whatever 100k page views and then down here i will have another section and this will be called um billing wrapper Something like that. And this is where yearly billy billing 25%. Okay, so I had my monthly billing. So how do I want to do this? I think this will be an input type of checkbox. And then next to this, we'll call this uh, billing type. Same thing here. Billing type. And then next to this, we will have uh, a label, if I can get it to autocomplete for me. There we go. We'll call this billing type, so it points back to that ID. And here is where I think what I'm gonna do. I'm not sure if this is the best idea, uh, but I think it might be easiest to kind of display these things how I want them. So I'm gonna have inside here, I don't remember if a label is, I think a label is display, um, 
in line by default. But anyhow, I'll just add a paragraph and change that to block here in a second. This will be monthly billing. And then here I'm gonna have a like a fake checkbox. And that won't have anything right now. And then we'll have yearly billing at 25% discount. And let's see, does this say discount? Oh, it does, okay. So we'll in, end up adding this in like a span or something, right? So we'll wrap this in a span. And then let's see, discount itself will be wrapped in another span like that. And we'll end up styling this differently, um, whether or not it's visible on mobile or desktop. Okay, so below here now we've got, uh, we'll have like check mark section or wrapper. How about this? And then here, let's see, all of these are gonna be the same kind of check section. So maybe we'll call it like check paragraph. Sure, all right, and so here we'll have an image um, and eventually drop that in. And then next to this will be the paragraph of unlimited websites. And I'll just copy this down a few times. One, two, three. And 100% data ownership and email reports. Okay, so I think we're good with all that. Let me come below here and we'll have a button. with a type of BTN. Uh, this will say start my trial. And I think that's good. Okay, so here it is. Everything is more or less uh, there. This we need to adjust based on kind of what kind of page views they can get. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything over here. And sorry, my internet's really bad. Um, I can kill my camera, by the way. Let me know how bad it is. But like I said, I'm moving and I'm hoping sooner than later uh, to be able to fix that. All right, so uh, let's think through the things that need to update on the screen. So there's obviously the yearly and monthly billing, depending on which I've checked. I'm going to close this down so I'm not tempted to look at it. <laughs> Move this over here. Um, because in addition to that, I, I need to update this. I need to update this. I think that's it. So um, uh, let me open back up the README because I think they gave me, yeah. So 10000 would be the smallest amount, and that's $8 per month. 50 So let's go ahead and grab this out. The visitor switches the toggle. To yearly billing prices, a 25% discount should be applied to all prices. And I'm guessing the total should change, right? That makes sense to me. Okay. So let's come back over here. Um, and let's just declare a little state up here. Or not state, but uh, just like a, an object here. We'll call this like pricing deets. All right. And then let's paste this back in here. And basically what I'm after is how many where that slider should be. Um, how do I want to break this up? If there's five sections on here. Let's just break it up between one through five. Mm, but is that gonna be good for accessibility? Probably not, it probably needs to be what it actually is. But the hard thing is you're gonna have one million all the way up. I think if I add an ARIA label that will change the accessibility. So may, maybe let's try it one through five. So I think what we're gonna do is just do one and we'll do page views. And this will be 10K. This will be a string here. And then I'll do um, monthly will be eight. I think I'm gonna change it to here. It says yearly. Because that should change to not 16 a month, but 16 a year or whatever a year, I think, when they switch to billing. Um, so, yeah. So that would be 8 times 12, right? And then times 0.25. So 24 off, whatever that is. So 72. All right. So that should be 72. And we're just going to go kind of one after the other here. So what we're going to do is as we update it, We'll make the slider go from one to five because there's five stops and I, I probably just want them to be equal. That makes sense to me. Um, and then I'll allow you to change it by one so that it kind of clicks to each of those um, spots as well. Um, and then we'll just update these one after the other. So let me grab this again and we'll say 50K. And I guess maybe this should have been like that. Um, 
and then 12 a month. And I'm going to make these numbers, I think. I mean, I guess I could make them strings. It doesn't super matter, but... Uh, yeah, let's just do numbers. 24, uh, 1 million, and 36. Okay, so monthly is 50K. Oh, I already messed that up. All right, so this is 50K. Um, this is 12. Uh, now, what is it? 12 times 12 times... Um, is that what I want? 12 times 12 times 0.25, so minus 36. All right, and I'll paste this in here now. Oh, that's not paste. That is, okay. Let's go a few more times. So this will go three, four, five, and let's just kind of at least get the basics in here. What did I have next? Yeah, the 16, 50K, 24. It's the hard, th the thing I don't love about for an inventor project is you have to manually type out everything constantly. Uh, I wish they just give you like a, a data <laughs> file or something, but I get the fact that, you know, some of the actual structure of how you do this is part of the project. So I understand, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. All right. <laughs> Page views, uh, unknown word. That's, that's okay. Okay. So 108. So we're down here to 16. So I'll go 16 um, times 12. Uh, times 0.25, so minus 48. Gives me 144. I think I'm doing that right. Uh, off the top of my head, let me know if that's not right. Let's go 24 times 12. Times 0.25. So minus 72 is 216. Oops. And then finally, uh, 36. So we'll go 36 times 12. Times 0.25. Minus 108 will be 324. Okay. So I think we got all the data we need. Um, now what we can do is let's go ahead and pull in a ref here. So use ref and we'll say const a slider or range, something like that. Let's see range, let's call it range ref equals use ref. Um, in five parts. I must have missed reference to what you're talking about, Pablo. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so down here, um, this is the one we're wanting right here. So here I'm gonna say the min is one, um, the max is five, the, what is that thing called? Um, step, I think, yeah, step is one. So this should only let me go one. Yeah, see how it like, I only have five clicks, all right, as I go. And then I think I can set this aria label. And here, I guess I might need some state. So maybe, maybe we don't do use ref here. Maybe we do set state. So let's say like um, page views, set page views uh, from use state. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna get rid of this as well since we're not using it. And I'll probably get rid of the app CSS. I mean, it's one little thing, so we'll probably just pull everything from the same file on that main CSS file. So we'll get around to that in a second. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna start this at zero. No, we're gonna start this at one. No, we start at three probably, so at the middle. Um, then what I'm going to do is come down here and we'll set the default value to three. Um, this aria label here will simply uh, point back to that. So we'll say, um, how do I want to do this? Yeah, so what we'll do is say, I got to process this somehow. So as it slides, um, we'll have an on change handler probably. Um, so let's do that. So we'll say on, on change, on input. I think these are essentially the same in React, the way that they, they did this, which kind of always throws me off, but 
Uh, so we're going to grab, actually, let's just send it to handle, um, handle page view slider or input, something like that <laughs> input. Okay. Page view input up here, uh, function, function handle page view input. This will be, we'll take in this, we'll e dot prevent default just because I guess I don't. I don't want to prevent the default. I want it to slide like normal. Uh, let's just console.log the e dot target dot value, something like that. I think that's right. Um, and let me open this up and see if it actually does something. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's what I'm wanting right here. Uh, so I think this is where, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and have just like, um, Mm -mm. Should I set state for all these things? Let's do it. All right. Um, Cause this is going to be set page views. Now I can, I can base everything off that page views. So all I'm going to do is update um, our set page views to whatever my e.target.value is. I think that's what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me come down here. That also means that I can take my page views. Um, and what is this thing called up top? Pricing deets. All right. Pricing. Let's go pricing deets dot page views. Actually, I think I'd want to do it like this. Page views like that <laughs> because it's... I don't have a dot page views. I just have numbers. So this will give me like zero, one, two, three. Well, not zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Um, and then off of this, it depends if I'm monthly or yearly. So now I probably need um, some separate state. So is monthly set is monthly. And by default, this is going to be Boolean, but we'll say use state. And this needs to be false. No, true. Um, so why does it like that? Oh, probably because of this down here. Okay. <laughs> so, um, now here's where I need to figure out if it's is monthly. It's getting a little sloppy, but let me close this down for now just so I can actually see what's going on. Okay. Um, so what I'm, I need to ask is if it is monthly, then give me a monthly here. Otherwise give me. Oops, otherwise give me yearly. I think that will work. All right, so let's look at this right here. And what I'm looking for is this ARIA label 16. So this is the amount. Yeah. So basically what it's doing is it's looking up this object, grabbing the page views, which is whatever the value is. And then basically if it is monthly, it's going to bump it up. Um, or it's going to use the monthly value in that object up top. Otherwise, it'll use the yearly value right here. Um, now I just need to actually make this make some sense. So let's wrap all of this here in, oops, and a template string. Um, and this needs to say, oh, am I overcomplicating this? Because this slider, um, slider should be for the page views. Right, so this just needs to say whatever the page views are. Yeah, so I just overcomplicated that, but at least we we're probably going to use this later. So maybe let's just copy it out, so I don't have to re-type that out, and we'll just drop it there. And if I can remember, <laughs> that's what we'll do. So we'll do a page uh, views, hundred thousand, and this just needs to say page views. I think that will work um, there. Uh, what is the default value of the input in curly braces? So default value tells um, the browser where to start the value. So like when the, it, the component first loads, what should the value be? If I set this to value, uh, then I'm like, I'm hard coding that in there on, on change. I should probably also set this value though too. Um, so usually use the default value when you don't tie state to it. Um, so since I've tied to state to it, what I need to do is to make this a controlled input, change this just to page views. So now the value will be two. If I move to three, it'll be three. Four or five, and you can see that there. And then 
undefined page views. Well, that's not what I wanted. Um, <laughs> pricing deeds, page views should be my number. And then this should be dot page views. 100K page views, 500K page views, 1 million page views. Okay, so there we go. All right, so that should be set and ready to go now. Um, now we just need to update everything else and then change this to monthly or yearly, depending on what's going on here. And I think we'll be pretty much set to go there. So let's come back up top here. Is there anything else I need to do here? Not really. I kind of hate that this is a one-liner, so let's, and, and it's stuck up there. So let's go ahead and just bring this down here. And so we'll grab the event and we'll basically just uh, set page views on e.target at value like that. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and grab right here. We're going to have an amount. So this will just be whatever my page views. And here's where I can steal what I already did. All right. I think so. So right and say here. And in fact, I think it needs to even be in a template string. No, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> How about this right here? Okay, so what we're going to do is drop this thing in here. And basically, if it is monthly, then give me the month. Otherwise, give me the year. So $12 a month, 16, 24, 36. Okay, cool. Same thing here. Um, this needs to be dynamic. So let's grab this here too. And we'll say if this is monthly. Um, and this is can actually be simpler. We'll just say per month like this, otherwise this is per year. Oops. So per month, per month, per month, okay. Then what I want is right here to say um, on change, on input. Again, I think they're the same. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, I wanna do, I just wanna toggle the state of is monthly. So uh, let's come down here. I will say set is monthly to the opposite of is monthly. I think that should work. Look at that. All right. And now this should update as well. Okay. And obviously we've got some styling with monthly billing versus yearly billing, but uh, we'll, we'll apply that later. Anything else I need to update? I think the only other data point is this 100 page views. I think this might mean that I've actually done the logic before the design for one uh, once in my life so pricing right here um we'll change this out here oops so page views and then i guess i do need this whole thing here so right here let's drop this thing in here so pricing page views um except what i need here is not monthly and yearly I just need page views dot page views okay I think that's right um, let's just add uh, a non-breaking space here 550k 10k look at that all right we did things now the cool thing here is I can actually just keyboard to this and move it um, with my my arrow keys because we made this a range slider and we set those steps and all that kind of stuff so another kind of cool way um, benefit of doing all that, which means you use for template string. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question there on change when the input changes on blur input. Yeah. So the, that's how it works in normal, uh, like JavaScript. However, like the normal events, I think react uses both on change and on input the exact same way. Like there's no difference functionally in how they work. Um, as my recollection is, that's just the way that they design their system. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but that's the last time I checked, that was my recollection. All right, so I think we're set there. And now it's just down to styling. Check this on and off. All right, so everyone's favorite thing, at least my favorite thing, let's do some styling. Um, and it's not sarcasm, I actually like styling. All right, so let's move this thing over here. And uh, let's start, I guess we need one of those images. Let's start with the mobile and we'll kind of go from there. So um, let me start by just getting these colors set up. So what we're going to do is um, let's just declare this as our accent muted. And I'm going to go ahead and, and declare all these to start with. And then we'll kind of go 
yeah. Let's just name it all, and then I'll strip out the HSL like I normally do. This will just be my normal accent. This will be uh, discount muted. And this will be discount. Now, all of these, I don't remember where they actually show. This is going to get sloppy here with how big I'm zoomed in. Let me zoom out just a touch. Okay, so here we're, we've got... Um, why don't I just call this BT and well, maybe this could just be dark. Normally I wouldn't call it dark. So that way I can have actual like light and dark mode and switch between them. But in this case, it should be fine. Then these are all, I'm going to call this thing muted. Now let's, yeah, let me move these. How do I want to do this? Yeah, let's call this thing muted. Because I think that's what I would think of it as. Um, which commands you use to put the select detect inside a template string. Okay. Uh, let me move back and, and figure out. <laughs> All right. So, um, like, these right here? Or do you mean, like, how did I get it to wrap it? Usually, if you select everything and then you hit that, it just will wrap it automatically in VS Code. If that's what you mean, if what you mean is how I selected this, basically by using this bracketed syntax, I'm passing in a dynamic um, variable. So it's basically looking at the page view number, if it's one, two, or three, or four, or five, or whatever, and it's grabbing that key, and then it gives me the value, and that's where I can go dot page views dot whatever. And in some of these, like you saw earlier, I had to actually check first, is it monthly or yearly? And then basically select the, the, the inner key here of monthly or yearly based off of that. So hopefully that was your question. Uh, if I didn't understand yet, let me know. Okay, so back over here, let's go ahead and name these things. Um, I'm, I think what I'm gonna do is, everyone's favorite thing, naming things. Uh, we'll do muted light or something like that. I, th I think that'll work, okay. And then these, I'm just gonna name neutral. And is that what I wanna do? Yeah, and then we'll go text pastry one to whatever and drop these in. Okay, so I think we're set there. Um, let's now come below. And it looks like these are all 15, 15. It looks like all those are 15 because it said this one was supposed to be. So this is probably like 18 maybe. So we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. But for now, I guess let's make sure we've already got the font family. So let's add a background color here and I'm gonna wrap this in HSL. So normally you'd have to go like var, um, let's say this was the neutral four, which looks about right maybe. Um, so normally you'd have to do it like this, but if you want opacity on anything, like we're gonna need a drop shadow here, we'll need a drop shadow here, then you have to like create new variables up top or do some kind of opacity thing. So what I typically like to do is grab all of these um, and I'm just gonna strip those out, um, go to the end and take those out too. Uh, let's see, the very end. Oh, that one never had one. Okay, <laughs> so we'll go off like that and then add this back in. Uh, and then I'm going to grab all of these commas and get rid of these two because the syntax I like to use doesn't in involve them. So now the only danger is now you have to wrap everything in HSL, but I just have a little shortcut in VS Code that um, allows me to do that naturally. So I can come in here and say like 0.2 and then we're good. So my shortcut is just comma HSL, and then it drops my cursor right in that spot. So that's what I like to do. Um, it's pretty much the same as typing var typing it. So, okay, so we've got the background color here um, to that neutral four that looks a little heavy. The only danger is now my extension that actually is so nice and gives me all those previews is gone. Um, so, you know, you may not like that. In fact, what I'm gonna do is copy this and then go back. Oh no, let's first do this. Let's copy this and then go back. And now I'm gonna comment these out so that I can actually see what these are. <laughs> All right, and then we'll paste these back in and then come back here and paste this into. I think, oops, we're set there. Let me just move that. Okay, there we go. Somehow this thing is not formatting my document. Configure formatter. Pretty sure I've done that before, but that's fine. Okay, so now we're set and I can actually see kind of the colors we're supposed to have and maybe let's split this thing so that I, I can keep these up top here. 
like that and then be down below. Okay, so we've got the body set up. I think that's pretty close. Neutral three, maybe it's neutral two. I don't know, they don't tell me these things. Um, in fact, maybe they did. Uh, style guide, didn't they tell me like exactly the, the right things? White pricing, main background was my 99%. Neutral two, okay, so that was right. Empty slider bar, toggle, grayish blue, pricing component, okay, so the actual card, I think, is the class we gave that. Did I give it a class? Um, let's check. Class name app. I did not. Er, that's, that wouldn't be anyhow. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so here, let's grab the background color. And this is going to be my neutral one, which is white in this case. Um, but that's fine. Okay, so all the text, it looks like, is the default. Actually, most of it's that kind of muted color. Empty slider bar, toggle text, grayish blue, which I think is what I named muted. Yeah. So we'll say that the text color here should be uh, muted. And then see what else I've got. Um, white, pale blue, CTA text. Um, I'm guessing that's that right there. Um, light red, discount background slider okay so that's at least a starting point let's go ahead and just set up some basic font sizes and kind of go from there so i'm going to get rid of uh, let's just pull this up so down here we're going to have like font stuff and we'll have um font size 400 which will be kind of the base will be my 15 pixels uh font size we'll go 600 i guess we're jumping a level uh, let's see, well, we got this size too, which looks like at least 32. Oh uh, yeah, let's go 600. So here we'll go like 18 pixels and that'll be for this top section up here. And then we'll go font size of 800 and we'll set this to 32. It's probably more like 36 at least. Again, I don't have the Figma file, so I'm just kind of guessing on these, but as long as you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Uh, okay, I think we're set there. Let's go ahead and set a default font size though. So font size will be var of font size 400. Uh, we'll call that my default. Um, let's also go ahead and set a basic clear in here. We'll grab my after and grab the before. And in here we'll say box sizing of border box and then margin zero and padding zero. Okay. I think that works. Um, I probably also want to grab my input and label and button and set these all to font of inherit. Um, and while I'm at it, let's just go ahead and add my H1 in here too. And that way I kind of restart my font sizes uh, from scratch. All right, so back down this way, um, fonts. And I guess since they already give me the colors, and what they go for. I can probably get rid of this. Let me just copy it, <laughs> just in case I want it later. Uh, but for now, that's what we'll say. Okay, so down here, I, I don't know what these line heights are gonna be, but let's go ahead and just set some basic line heights. So we're gonna say line height of one, which I'll probably use on my button, will be one. Uh, line height of 1.3 maybe. They don't give me a line height, do they? Line height? No, I don't think so. 15, no, okay. Uh, so let's also then say line height 1.3, maybe. 1.2, maybe. I don't know what the default would be for this. We'll say 1.3. That uh, will be 1.3. So for the body, I'm going to set my uh, line height to be, nope, <laughs> line height right here to be my var line height of uh, 1.3 by default, and then we'll change it as we need to. Let me just double check that that's actually working. Come up here, if I change this to 1.5, okay, yeah. Let's do 1.4, I, I like to have a little bit more breathing room and they don't tell me so we can kind of do what we want. Now I know I'm gonna want some utility classes here. Um, so let's think through these, so utils. And one of these is gonna be uh, uppercase and we'll set this to text decoration, no, text transform of uppercase. What else do I want? Um, so those will all be uppercase. I probably want some spacing things. 
Um, so maybe let's set up some spacing um, breakpoints. So we'll say like spacing, and let's just do like a four point scale. So I'll say space uh, extra small, this will be four pixels. And we'll just copy this down a bunch of times. Um, this will be small and medium and large and extra large and 2XL and 3XL. And maybe I'll want more than this, but um, let's change this on a, <clears throat> a four point scale. So 20, <clears throat> 24. Uh, 28 and for now uh, we'll leave it at that okay um, I'll use these to create little grid sections so typically speaking what I like to do uh, is uh, if I have vertically spaced things so like stuff in a stack I'll create little grid stacks and then vertical or horizontally spaced things I'll do uh, flex things now we don't have many flex things here this will probably just be custom it looks like this is probably just position absolute off the side of that anyhow. Spacing, this should be okay. So I think we'll just do vertical stacks. So let's create some utils for that. And this will be like um, card stuff. <laughs> so here I'll say grid. Uh, we'll go extra small. I don't have anything that close. Probably the closest I have is this or this. And that looks like probably 16. Um, which was uh, my large. Sure. So we'll say grid large, even though that doesn't really feel right. <laughs> but we'll say display grid and then gap of our large like that. And then this bigger one is at least double between these, probably more than that. So we're going to go to XL. And I think what I'm going to do is make this I just mind grid uh, medium, even though I know it's space large, you're just going to have to forgive me for that. And then this will be my grid large and this will be my extra or two XL, I think. All right. So let's actually use these so I can see them in practice and we can figure them out from there. Uh, so over here, let's move this here. Let me come to the hundred thousand page view. So in here, this will be uppercase and that should take on that. That does cool. Um, this looks like way bigger than 15. Oh, I'm way zoomed in. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Um, maybe let's just stay zoomed in then just so we can see what's going on. Nah. Put it put it how it's supposed to be. Um, okay. Um, make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make sure we add these grid things where we need them. So sign up for our 30-day trial. So I think I had this as a break, which I guess that's fine. Eh, let's set these as their own paragraphs. So this will be uh, a paragraph here, and then this will be a paragraph here. And for some reason, nothing wants to format. So maybe somehow format document, format document, there we go. Okay, I'm not sure why that wasn't formatting earlier. Uh, let's put these inside of a little grid container. I guess kind of all these. That's a little bit spaced differently though, huh? Hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's, we'll put this in a class name of grid medium. And then we'll do the same thing here. I mean, that's already spaced out by that much though. So maybe this is a little bit smaller. Maybe this is my eight. So let's, let's do a grid small for that. Okay, and we'll have to add that as utility class, but you can see it spaces that stuff out. So these are spaced large and that's medium and that still doesn't look right. So this probably just should be medium. So I think I'll leave that alone for now. Um, yeah, I, th I think I'm fine with that. Um, anything else I wanna stack? I guess these things down here at the bottom, these checkbox things. Uh, it's hard to see with being so zoomed in. Uh, checkbox wrapper. So this can just be my utility class of grid medium as well. So those would be spaced out next to each other. Now these are going to be spaced out um, either way. Let's see. It probably also needs to be place item center, but I guess we can do that. Let's grab all of these and we'll say flex 
and this is probably going to be like flex small, something like that. So we'll space those icons out either direction. And maybe let's pull in that checkbox too. So let's collapse this and we'll do like um, assets or something like that. And we'll say import check mark from, let's see, where are we at? Assets, images, check. Not gonna help me out to the final, <laughs> final step. Um, icon check, okay. Icon check dot SVG. All right, and then we'll grab this check mark and we'll drop it in here, which, you know, I could have just looped over these, I guess. You know, I don't, when I'm templating this out, but just to get everything on the page, it's not like it's a huge deal to type a few characters. All right, so let's come in here and drop this check mark in here. And I can just leave that, it's just decorative, so I can leave that alt off. Um, but now we've at least got those uh, sitting over there. Let's also then come over here and we added a flex small. So we'll say flex small and this will be display flex and gap of our small maybe. What is my small anyhow? Small is eight pixels. I think that's what I'd want it to be like. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, this is kind of is stretching this icon itself. So, oops, let's set this to, I mean, I probably would have wouldn't align item center anyhow, but that should take care of this um, because it's stretching by default. So I think I'm good with that. Now the grid medium here, this needs to be, I guess this also needs to be check box, check mark wrapper. And just to kind of keep this separate from everything else, because not every grid medium is going to have that. Here I can say um, place items center. And that should set them center like they are. Maybe let's also get this thing in the middle and actually get the card style. I'm just kind of going at random on this thing. But we'll say min height. Oh, we'll be 100 view height. Dynamic, why not? Dynamic view height, that's fine. And then we'll do display grid and place items center. Oops. Items center. There we go. Okay, so um, let's also think about the spacing we can use for our padding as well. So if I jump back over here, it looks like, I mean, we're just guessing at this point. Let's call that 16 pixels spaced out. This might even be larger, this gap here. Um, and then everything really is text. Yeah, text align center, right? So, I mean, I normally wouldn't do that on the body, but this is the only thing in our entire document, so um, I think that's fine. Okay, text align center. Um, what else do I want to do? Let's add padding to that card like we said we would. And then maybe I'll be a little bit more <laughs> um, systematic about updating this. So we'll say var space medium. I think that's my 16 pixels all the way around. Let's go large. That looks like barely enough, but I'm also zoomed. No, I'm not zoomed. Okay. We'll call that good. So what was that large? 16. Okay, so that's what I did want. Um, now, let's let's just work on the basic card itself. Then I'll do the top part, and then we'll kind of work our way down the card. So uh, the basic card, anything else? Oh, not over there. Anything else I need? I need some border radius. I would guess that's 8 pixels. Um, something like that. I need this line in between those. I can just add that on the card checkmark wrapper. I think that's pretty much it. Um, it would probably also need some kind of spacing on the card itself. Um, so let's go ahead and add a border radius. Radius, and I'll just do hard code eight pixels in here. Um, and then I also need a drop shadow of some kind. I, you know, they don't really tell you, I don't think shadow nope okay so we get to do whatever we want um so let's come back over here and i'll say box shadow and this will be zero maybe like eight pixels and 16 pixels and then let's do like neutral four and we'll maybe neutral sure let's do 12 off here 24 Oops, 
Let's see. I think that's pretty close. Sure. I, I feel satisfied. Um, all right. And then I, we could do the spacing on here a couple different ways. Let's just do it directly on this container. We'll do gap of var space. Let's try extra large. And again, I'm just kind of guessing at what these should be. Probably it should be bigger than that. 2XL. Uh, sure. I think that's... Do I have a 3XL? Do I have a 4XL? No. Okay. So 3XL. I think let's do the biggest one we've got. And then we'll space all this out. Because this has to be separate. So let's start up top here now. And I've got my H something, H1. And here... I like to do class names and style the class name rather than the tag itself when I when I think about it because um, that way the semantic tag can be whatever it needs to be and I can just style the class however I want. So we'll take my H1 here and say font size and this will be font size 800, nope, 600. Um, and then we'll say font weight and then we only have two so I'll just do bold and normal. I think that should be fine. And then my color here should be my var of dark muted what did i have that as yeah dark yeah hsl uh, dark okay so we're going to call that pretty much good um sign up for 30 day trial credit card required those still seem way too spaced out so maybe i should just grab these and drop them um into a div that's now it doesn't seem spaced out enough <laughs> so let's come back in here We'll do class name of grid small and create a grid small up here. Uh, how about right cheer? So we'll go grid small and this should be grid. Let's go small. I think I'm happy with that. Okay. So those are good. Um, the entire app though, let's see, where's this? This is spaced out. Yeah. So the entire app here should be a grid of large, I think. Or no, we had 3XL was our biggest. So let's do extra large here for for this. And then I think I might need to actually make this bigger than my 3XL because that, if I remember right, there's more space here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and make this like 4XL and I'll come back up top here. We'll break our pattern a little bit from just the four-point grid, which, I mean, should honestly probably be like an eight-point grid anyhow, but because four points is pretty small. Let's go 36 here. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Um, 4XL, and then let's come back down here. Space 4XL, 3XL, 4XL. Doesn't quite seem enough still, so let's go 40. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Um, this thing should also probably be like a... Um, what do we call that? Like, We'll just call it like a top. How about just top itself? Um... Or I guess I could have a utility class because all I really need to do is set this as position relative. So let's do that. So I'll have relative will be position of relative. Um, and then let's add that image behind it. I like that. And then I'll double check the desktop version as well, I guess. Desktop design just to make sure. Okay, so those are stacked next to each other. <laughs> so now... All this work I did over here, I don't think I like this anymore. Um, so let's get rid of this and this. And let's go back to how we had this originally, where this is just um, a, a line break. 30-day trial. Uh, is that what I want? Sure. All right, and then... <laughs> Now I'm gonna go back. We'll change it if I if it'll let me. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> so we'll add a paragraph here again. Retype all this. Um, wrap this in grid small. Okay. We'll we'll figure that out later in a second. Let's first of all get the image in here. Like I said, I was going to. Kind of all over the place today. Uh, pattern circles background. What is this thing? Background SVG. Was that just? Oh, is that this? I didn't even see that. How about that? Okay, well, that's fine. We can do that too. So let's bring the background and the pattern circles in. So we'll call this like just background and this will be circles. 
and this will be pattern circles.svg and this background will be bg pattern all right so first thing i'm going to do is come inside here and maybe this will also be position of relative is that what i want sure so we'll do relative and then here i'll have an image with the class of uh, bg sure um, and this will point to my background like that. And this is just decorative. So we can leave it just like that. And we'll, we'll position this. Obviously, right now it's not working. But um, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, where's my circles? Let's add the circles in here too. Uh, so image, circles. And this will point to circles like that. Okay, cool. Now, why is everything else gone? It's all this way? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, that probably just means I need to set a basic clear up for all that. So let's do that. Let's shrink this down. Come back up here and say image, uh, display block, and then we'll do max width of 100%. Okay, I think that should work. Um, let's go ahead and set this, the background and the circle, and then we'll move down to the cart. So the background is just a class of background, which let's maybe change that up just a touch. We'll say background image at least. So a little bit more descriptive. And let's come down here before the card and we'll say like background stuff. Background image here, I want to be position of uh, absolute. And, right, and I guess, is that what I want? Yeah, let's say top of zero. Probably need to come save this over here. Okay, there we go. Um, how do I want this to be? I always want it to take up half. So I could say top of zero and bottom 50%. No. Let's just inset this thing to zero, see what happens. This doesn't seem to be changing anything. Um, let's go left. BG image. BG image. That's this. All right. Maybe let's get rid of the relative here. Okay. So we'll do top of zero. And... Does it always have to take a path? I think so. So bottom 50%, does that work? No. How do I want to do this? I guess I could set it as like a background grid. Um, do left to zero, first of all. Um, does it always take up exactly half? It looks like it, so. How do I want to do this? Um, <laughs> let's see what, if I just set this to height of 50 and then object fit of contain, or I mean cover, and then object position of left. Oops, leave that there, object, position, there we go. Okay, and then Z index of negative 10 or something. And that looks really big on that, but if I go down to a small screen size, that's pretty much what that looks like, right? Sure, all right, so I think I'm good there. <laughs> all right, let's just pos position that other image we need in the right place and kind of go from there. And let me make sure I don't actually have any real errors. Okay, yeah, I think that was just from earlier because I've never cleared those. Okay, so let's do this uh, image up top here. This was called circles, um, and it's inside of that grid section. Let's just do top stuff. Um, and we'll grab my circles, and this will be position of absolute and Z index of zero, I guess, or negative 10. Negative five, so it's behind everything. Um, 
And I guess it's basically just in the middle. So left, 50%. Um, and then top zero, maybe? Oops. It's kind of a little bit <clears throat> higher than that, isn't it? Something like that. Okay. And then I'll transform, uh, translate X. We'll go back 50% to put it in the middle. There we go. I think that's good for that. Um, let's just make sure that this thing wraps properly. So probably what I should do is come here to my grid small and add this as like a custom like text wrapper or something like that. Um, again, if it was a bigger project, I probably wouldn't call it, call it that. But then here I'll say text wrapper will be display of grid. Actually, let's do display flex. Flex wrap of wrap and then a gap of our space small. All right, so that way when it's on bigger screen sizes, it'll go out like that. When it's not, it'll snap down. Yeah, okay. So now we just need to say um, justify content center. And maybe what I'll do is space it up and down by small. And we'll space it side by side by extra small. So that it looks like a normal space up and down. Or yeah, right and left, but it looks bigger this way. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that top section. Um, we need some padding on the entire body before we move to the card, so let's do that. Where's my body? Okay, um, so right here, let's do padding, and I think we decided that was gonna be medium. Oops, medium, sp spacing. Eh, sure. <laughs> Maybe we do large on that. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, all the rest of that looks decent. Let's go back to the circles and just make sure that this is high enough. Maybe this is supposed to be more like 50. 35, uh, something like that. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, so back here, uh, let's zoom in here. Let's worry about this page views next. Does that look a little smaller? Uh, maybe it is. So let's add another font size. Let's go 300. We'll call this 13 pixels, something like that. And then what I want to do is come in on my uppercase right here. Um, and maybe let's just change it everywhere. Eh, I don't like that. We should, probably shouldn't do that. Um, page views, we'll call this. Um, let's come to the card section down here. We'll add page views and say this, this should be font size of our 300. All right, so it should make it slightly smaller. And this also needs to be font weight of bold. So I did need some kind of thing on it. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and before we do the slider, let's just set this stuff out as well. So we've got um, input for monthly, yearly, below the wrapper, pricing deets per year. Okay, so here we go. So inside here, um, how do we want to do this? Okay, so this will be its own section. All right, I think. Yeah, and then this will be its own section. So let's strip out all this. And let's add this in a span. And I guess we should give this a class name. We'll call this something like amount. And then this is where I'll drop this in. And I guess... Yeah, we can just do it just like that. So it should look the same, but now I can come in here and grab my mount and set my font weight uh, to bold and then my font size to um, var uh, font size 800. Okay, and then I also need color to be var of dark. That. Um, now this is $16 a month, which means I probably need to wrap this in some kind of helper function um, is there any other place I've got dollars? No. It's always going to be... Let's see, $16, $32. I guess it's always going to have dot zero zero, so we could just be lazy <laughs> and do that. Uh, but while we're here, let's just do it right. All right, so where was that amount right here? To so this span, what I want to do is wrap these pricing details in a function, in a little helper function we'll call like uh, format currency and I'll wrap it in that I should yell at us because we don't have this yet and let's just define this up top here 
I guess we could also import import this from like another file or something, but um, I don't think we need to do that. So we're going to take it in amount, and this should be a uh, string, right? Yeah, or no, it's a number, isn't it? So we'll say to locale. Can I tell this that it's a number? I know I'm not in TypeScript. No, it's just not going to like that. Okay, <laughs> so I think it's amount dot two locale string. I'm going to try to remember this off the top of my head. Undefined for the uh, locale is fine. And then type is currency. And oops, currency. And maybe this needs to be like this. So there's a this is a method that lives on numbers. And then style, I think, is USD. I think that should work. Format currency. Taking the amount. Um, let's see. Format currency. Where's the other one I use? Okay, here we go. So I can get rid of this right here, and it should just add that in. All right, so something happened. Um, it's not a function. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So what is it getting in here? should be a number let's look it up to locale locale string uh, number copying other people's website design um, I think as long as you call it out if you're going after uh, if you're going after like a an actual yeah if you're going after like a front-end like design job like a css job i think if, if you can show that you can mimic a design and do it well that's that's fine but honestly i'm not probably the best person to ask for that kind of stuff so um I don't, that's that's my two cents um two locale string off a number um console log type of amount because i thought this was a number let's see does it give me yeah it gives me number okay we're a uh, type of number um oh i never returned anything return let's try that amount to locale string is not a function to locale string did i just copy that wrong oh i forgot the e no error occurred something's happening Okay, so at least I'm getting something right. Let's come down to options, um, style currency. Oh, style currency. And this was currency. Okay. And this should be, oops, this should be USD. Moment of truth. Hey, something happened. Um, <clears throat> there we go. So the point here is basically that you can... Um, you can keep your values what they are, so keeping them as numbers, but you can style them using the built-in methods uh, in the browser. Don't be lazy, keep it dry. <laughs> Filled stacks, yeah, thanks. Um, I'm not sure what that was a reference to because it's been a bit, I think, since I saw your comment, but um, hopefully I followed that advice. Okay, so here we go. We got this styled out properly. Let's see anything else I need to do. I don't think so. I guess we should probably space this out evenly. Format currency. So let's grab this and we'll say like amount wrapper. All right, and we'll grab this here. It's getting really hard to see everything. So <laughs> let me snap these up. Um, get rid of this and come in here so at least I can kind of see what's going on. So amount wrapper, we'll say position or display flex. Um, align items center wasn't this a wrapper around everything yeah okay that should work okay and then uh, justify content center uh, justify content center okay there we go uh, I guess maybe we have a gap on here of our like extra small maybe okay I think that's good um, maybe I should add a space here too while we're at it um, or get rid of both of these spaces let's see if this will let me do this no it won't okay so let's just add the space manually in here oops like come on there we go 
Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Um, let's move to the actual, let me make sure. Oh, you know what? We had the whole thing separated depending on where it was at. So for now, we're going to leave it alone, but we're eventually going to have to wrap that in a, a little bit of a different way on desktop. So let's first get the slider, then operational, and we'll kind of go from there. So I think what I want to do with this slider is have a fake slider. Uh, so where are we at? Where's my input? Type checkbox, type yearly, okay, up here. So this range wrapper, um, I think what I actually want is to hide that and instead to have like a... Let's have this whole thing be inside of like a, a channel, basically. So that'll be a fake uh, range. This will be position relative. It'll stretch that whole width. And then inside of here, we'll have um, like, let's call it a track. And then we'll also have, and I don't want this to be a button or anything, because I'm basically going to hide all this from click events and just use the actual input to move it. So it doesn't matter what these things are. They can be divs or paragraphs or, I mean, they could be H1s for all I care. They probably shouldn't be for accessibility, but they don't basically don't need to be clickable or touchable or anything like that. Um, so then we'll call this thing, let's just call it like a thumb. Okay, and I think inside here is where I have my final image, which was check icon slider. So let's go here and this will be icon. How about we just call the slider? And this will be icon slider. I think that's right. Uh, back down this way. Um, yeah, right here. So we'll say icon or slider. I think is so all we called that. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's now design this stuff out. Let's open back up the CSS over here. Things are getting a little tight on the screen. This is not going to let me move it over. Okay. Um, so let's come down here and we've kind of lost track of where we're at. Mount wrapper. So maybe up here, we'll call this section, uh, like the slider section. And here I'll have a fake range, <laughs> range, goodness, range like that. Um, and this, I just want to be position of relative. And I think that's kind of all I'm going to do here. Um, just to, so we can see it, let's say background color, and I'll set it to like dark uh, 0.1 or something, just so we can see where that's at. So this is where everything is going to be involved or included in. Um, let's see, is that what I want? A fake. I want the range wrapper to have that. Like this. Position. Yeah, let's let's just drop all this stuff up. And then here I'll have like 0.2. Okay, just to kind of keep everything clear. Then let's take the type of range like this. We'll, so we'll just select it with an attribute selector. Here I want this to be, first of all, position of absolute. So it should stretch the whole container, which we'll do with an inset zero, which is the same as top, right, left, and bottom zero. Um, now the other thing I want to do is probably set a height on this thing because I want this to be like maybe 32 pixels. That way it stretches that whole section. And then technically this slider stretches the entire section. Everything inside of this fake range should have um, a cursor of pointer. No, I mean uh, pointer events none. So I can't click on in the divs at all or any of the images or anything like that. So the only thing I'm clicking on is the actual range slider, which means I also want this to have uh, a cursor of pointer. So now anywhere along this entire div, essentially, because this is position absolute and stretching that whole section, uh, will show me that little click event. Um, now I can still select the whole thing and I'll actually move the whole thing. So we'll, we'll need to change that too. Now let's just now set the opacity here to zero. And I think I'll just set the appearance to none. I don't think I need to do that. Okay. Is grab this and say that on its focus state, because right now, let's see, if I focus on it, you can't tell anyhow, yeah because I have that opacity set to zero. Well, let's take the focus state and say whenever that focus state is selected, I wanna take the fake range, which is its immediate sibling, fake range. And inside here, I wanna take its thumb and I want to, let's just do a border of like four pixels solid and 
red or whatever. All right, so now when I come in here and I hover over it, you see I'm actually getting a border on that section. Now for now, it's like in a grid container, I think. Is it a grid container? No, it's just sitting in there as a div. Um, so eventually we'll style that a little bit differently, but now you can see we can actually control how that looks based off of uh, what's going on. So let's maybe, maybe <clears throat> make this a box shadow. And for now, what I'm gonna do, let's just go ahead Let's actually comment this out and actually style the thumb first so we can actually see it in its, in its full glory here. So we're gonna say background color will be my HSL of accent. Um, and then we'll say width and height should be like 32 pixels, right? It's gotta be the same as whatever the, um, the actual container is. And we'll say border radius, and this will be 100% Vmax. So the maximum it can be. And then I want this to be display grid and place item center so that that um, icon is in the very center. I think that works, except I think this needs to be bigger. Um, so like 40, which means this probably needs to be bigger, uh, which probably also means that I should just make this a variable, a local variable, It'd be like size or something like that, 40 pixels. And then I should be able to say var size. That should work. And then the same thing should work for its children as well. So I can come in here, grab this and this and set that. Okay, that way if I come up here and decide that this is not big enough, and I said to that, everything adjusts you know, by, by itself uh, automatically. Okay, now if we come in here and I grab this and we say it should be zero, 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 and let's start with maybe like three pixels or yeah, three pixels, solid, um, not solid. Um, we need neutral one, whatever the same as the background is. So basically all I'm gonna do, and you should be able to see this, is you see how when I'm focused on it, it has this white ring. So I'll have a white ring and then around that I'll have a green ring. Um, so we can do that like this with a comma and set this to something like six pixels and this can be accent. Uh, why do you do a shorter video? Why would the type range is not flex full width? Um, why you do a shorter video? I'm not sure I understand you there. Um, like, why am I taking so long? <laughs> or should I do shorter videos? Um, okay, so I think there we go. So now you can see that that focus state shows like that, which I think is cool. Um, this is anytime it's focused. Is that what I want? Oh, sure. So this isn't moving yet, but we'll get that to move it here in a second. Okay, I think I'm set there. Um, yeah, okay, I think I'm set there. Let's go ahead and just disappear this background. Where's my fake background? Right here. Let's get rid of that, and let's get rid of the other one. Where's that right here? Nope. Fake range, here we go. Okay, I also want this. Let's move this up here. Um, this also needs to be position of, I guess we'd say absolute. And I'm going to basically position this thumb in the JavaScript, depending on what the input is. But before we do that, let's go ahead and set the track. So track, um, I'm going to say height of maybe eight pixels width, hundred percent, um, background color. This will be neutral something. Let's start with three. Um, and then let's check the style guide. Um, toggle background, empty slider bar. So it should be my 95%. So let's come back up here. 95, so neutral three, okay. Lucky guess, we'll take it. Um, and then I want this to be a border radius of 100 V max. I think that's right. Um, yeah, more or less. Now, I guess we're also gonna have an inner track as well. So we should probably uh, set that up too. So again, I'm just gonna kind of fake all this because uh, I wanna keep the all the functionality of the input with the keyboard input and all that kind of stuff. But um, we'll call this like filled or something like that. But I wanna style it a little bit differently. So I want it to be my custom styling 
and I wish those things were easier to style, but I think the easiest thing to do is just to kind of create a fake one and uh, and fill that. So here we're going to say that this is, um, you know what, I think what I'm going to do is update a custom variable to change the position of the slider and how much this thing is filled. So I think this should work. Let's go ahead and just grab this and put it inside the track itself <clears throat> like this. And then the track can be also position of relative. And then down here, we're going to say um, position of absolute. Oops, apps, absolute. Okay, and then here we're going to say height is 100%. And then background color will be uh, accent. And then I should be able to set like a width on here of like 40%. Yeah, and it, and it goes 40%. Now, this also needs to probably be overflow hidden um, so that it gives that curl effect to it. Or I guess I could also... Um, can I also just set it up? Hmm. I'm thinking, I think I'm fine with that. Um, I guess I could have also just done a, a border radius on the, on the field section. Okay, so I think that's set. Um... Let's close that down. Actually, do I need to check soft? So the fill, full slider bar. Okay, so it actually is the, the, the muted color. So let's come back here and change this to accent muted. Okay. Um, let's get this all positioned correctly. Um, so the fake range. Where do I have that up here? I'm going to say display of grid and place items center. There we go. Okay, so I think that should work. Huh. Why is this not positioned where I want it? So I've got the track and I've got the thumb. I thought I made the thumb position absolute. I did. The track. Range wrapper. So the range wrapper needs to be, okay. So let's come back up to the range wrapper. This one needs to be display grid and place items center. No? Oh no. What did I just do? Um, with the display grid. Okay, that's fine. That's what I want. Um, I guess that we should also probably do a margin top. I usually like to let the parents control this kind of stuff, but 16 pixels, we're just going to make it look how it needs to. 32 pixels. Eh, let's go 16. Something like that. Maybe it's 12. Make it look a little bit more even. Okay, so now what we're going to do is adjust the styling of all that. But the last thing I guess we need to do before we do that is set a drop shadow. Because there's a drop shadow on this thing, right? Yeah. Pretty big one. All right, so let's come to the fake. Uh, let's come to the thumb. And whoops. Where are we at? Let's do down here. Okay, so I'll say box shadow. Uh, zero pixels let's go something like 20 pixels and like maybe 50 yeah that's probably too big 30 pixels um and we'll take our accent and add some opacity of like 0.2 whoa all right so that's way too big let's go 10 pixels um and then maybe this should be more like 10 pixels and maybe this is a little more intense something like that i mean we're, we're totally guessing because i don't have a figma file so we'll say something like that. That looks pretty close. Sure. Okay. So as we move this, you can see it's actually sliding, but this is not updating. So what I think I'm going to do is set on the thumb <clears throat> um, a variable, a local variable I'm going to call width. And this isn't declared anywhere right now. But we'll declare that, I think, somewhere else. And same thing here. So we'll set this to uh, var of width. 
So right now that shouldn't do a whole lot, but let's come back to our app and I'm gonna set, I'll just do it right here. So I'll set a style here and we're gonna set a variable of width to, um, let's see, what I, <laughs> what I want this to be. Some kind of calculation of my page views. So this might be like one or two or three or something like that. Let's see if it first updates at all. Um, I think I can set it on everything, right? Or do I have to set this locally for each of these things? You know what, let's do this and then I'll come to my fake range and I'm gonna just declare um, width, oops, width here to be like, I don't know, two or something like that. Oh, this has to be percentage. Okay, 20 per, uh, let's do like 20%. Oops. All right, and then here, page views uh, percent. Okay, so there we go. So it's whatever the width happens to be. 16, so it's one, two, three, four, or five. So now I need to multiply this. All right, let's see, 100%. So five is, <clears throat> five would be 100%. Um, let's see, did I get another comment? No, okay. Um, five is 100%, all right? So I just need 20%. Um, so page views times 20%, is that right? No, that's not right. Let me think through the math on this. <laughs> um, the thing I'm, I'm really not that good at. So if I have it at one, then that should be at 20%. Yeah, so I should be able to just multiply it times 20, right? Okay. So as this moves, I don't know, one should be zero. Okay, so if it's, if it's one, then page views times zero. Otherwise, oh no, that's not right. Um, if this equals one, uh, then we're doing page views times zero. Otherwise, it's page views times five, or times 20. I think that's right, <laughs> all right? Otherwise, it's page views uh, times uh, 20. Okay, so this should be all the way down, no? Page views equals one. If that's the case, it should be times zero, which would give me zero. Well, I mean, I can just return zero. Zero percent. So it shouldn't move at all. All right. What am I doing wrong here? So let's console log. Oh, I got something console logged already. Console log. Okay, here we go. Um. Let me come down here and I guess we'll just also start at three. So if I refresh, it goes in the middle. Do I have a class in here too, somewhere? It's a class name. That's always zero, just put a zero, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why that's not working. 0%, otherwise I want that. Because this should be, when it's all the way at the base, that should be at one, I think, right? Yeah, okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. Let's let's console log the, um, I guess let's do this wherever the input is the, the change here. Okay, so let's grab this here and we'll do that. And then also console.log um, e.target.value. I mean, I guess I can see that below too. So this should be one, which should be the same exact thing as the page views. So page views equals one. <laughs> what am I missing here? Maybe, okay. It's converting it to a string somehow. I don't know. Well, that worked, so <clears throat> that must be the problem. 
so we won't do a true comparison. So this should be one, two, whoa, one. What am I doing wrong here? So then if that's a string, I guess, do I need to actually make this thing a number? Two, three, four, five. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Uh, yeah, well, I'm not sure what's going on, Igor. That's the problem. Um, so what we're trying to do is just change this input slider. Um, so the way I've got this set up, and maybe talking back through this will ex explain this to me. And then I really should just finish this thing up instead of messing around with this. So we've got this range of slider. Um, and this is hidden on the page, but it's actually the thing that controls everything that's going on in this fake range. And the reason I'm doing it that way is so that I get keyboard events, so I can actually keyboard to this and use my mouse or my arrow keys and stuff like that. So you get a lot of the accessibility of the input, but you can style it however you want because we're hiding it and basically determining the fake range uh, as we go here. So that's basically what's going on. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, then what I'm doing is as I change that, um, the page view, so I've got five steps. One, two, oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, and five. Let me move this back in here, drop this in here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. So the fifth one should be 36 a month or 324 a year or whatever. And as I move this, it's basically got those five steps and the width is set based off of that. The width down here is set on the thumb. This is the percentage left that it is. Um, and then same thing here. Uh, this is the percentage left. Uh, I moved over or filled that it is. And you can see that those are working in tandem. So they're actually working. It's just the math is off. Uh, multiplying, yeah, it should course it to a number. So that's why that shouldn't really matter. Um, but somehow this is getting turned into a string. So the direct comparison wasn't working. And basically all I want to know is like if it's, I guess if it's one. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. This needs to be page views minus one. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me explain why that works that way. So <clears throat> if it's one, then I actually don't want it to be multiplied times 20. I want it to be all the way over. If it's two, if I multiply it times 20, it goes to the midpoint, uh, which is, or to 40%, which is not what I want. So after that, I basically want half so that if I eventually get to, see what happens if I get to five though? So five's not quite enough. So now I need to do um, the full amount. Let's see. Maybe I should just have this declared up top somewhere and just reference this because I'm going to need some kind of, yeah, so we'll need to actually strip this out and do an actual if statement up top. Um, I know. Math gets you right in the feels. Let's go update range position or something like that. And I think I can set it like this. And then we'll just say uh, function will be update range position. We'll take in... An amount I get, or all I really want is my page views. But if I do that, I've got to move this inside here, which is fine. And then let's paste all this stuff back in. And all I'm going to do is say if page views equals one, then uh, return uh, zero percent. Now below here. Or I could also do like a little switch. Um, switch. Is there like a switch statement? There we go. So the value here would be page views. And what I want is case of, uh, oops, not that case of, this should be page views. Page views. So case of zero, case of one, uh, then I want to return uh, zero percent uh, case of five all right I want to return a hundred percent and then for everything else uh, we'll just return a string of page views times 20 and everything is broken uh, this needs to have a break after it um, like this okay 
And I think that should work. All right, so what happened? Can I not set a variable to this? I don't remember if I've done this recently. I have to like call it? No. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> Somebody can let me know what to do if I'm messing this up somehow. Maybe it's to switch somehow. Unreachable code. Oh, because I'm returning. I guess I can just take these out then. Maybe it's the switch. I don't see anything over here. So let's just say if page views, this should not be taking this long. Equals one, then return 0%. Um, page views equals five, return 100%. And then for everything else, we'll return that. All right, so that should work. And maybe that's even a little cleaner too. I mean, it is in the middle, which is where I want it. But this doesn't seem to be helping me. This needs to be a percentage. Still not helpful. Uh, where is that thing? Where are we at? Right here, update range position. I thought I could it takes in a page it takes in the page view, but I don't need to pass it that, right? Let's try it. Page views. Okay, I guess I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, this should be a hundred percent. Okay, but now I gotta move this thing back. <laughs> oh my. This is more complex than I thought it'd be, because basically when it's at a hundred percent. This needs to be moved back, right? So, all right, so what I need to do now is take the thumb and do some custom styling on this too. All right, so we're gonna say um, the transform, translate, translate X um, is going to be, let's see, is this what I want? Let's just do it like 100% to start with. Uh, and this needs to be in a string. All right? Transform, translate, oh, it's, a, it's an object. Okay, so yeah, so now it's all the way back, which is what I want. But I only want it to be 100% if um, my value is returned 100. So what we'll do, or if it's, if it's five. Yeah, if it's five. So what we'll do is say, um, inside here that if page views is equal to five then return that otherwise return uh, zero is fine whatever zero and this needs to also be in quotation marks oops like that okay I think we got that worked out so if it's all the way over it'll actually move it back so it looks like it's starting there otherwise oh no what happened 12 page v equals 5 let's get rid of this and just make sure it's, it was working before that okay oh man it wasn't working okay well just when I thought I figured it out alright uh, so back over here um, this equals 5 this is page views minus 1 oh yeah duh, we already figured that out minus 1 Okay, there we go. 8, 12, 16, 24. Just a stupid slider. All right, but now the cool thing is we've got keyboard events and it's all working properly. Made a meal out of that, but it happens. Okay. Um, yeah, you're right, Igor. No breaks needed if you return in a switch, yeah. Um... Okay, so let's let's do the thumb and get out of here. Um, we need to position this as well, but let's kind of do, let's at least get the thumb right first, this little switch toggle thing. So let me come back down this way. Um, input type checkbox, okay. So here's what we're gonna grab and 
I'm just gonna grab it off the checkbox itself and basically do the same kind of thing. We're gonna hide it and create a fake one and use that to style everything. So back over to my CSS, wherever that's at. Let's come back down here. I'll we'll do like checkbox down here and grab the type of checkbox. And here, uh, I guess we want the billing wrapper too. So let's grab this first of all. And use, sometimes when I get stuck, I just set like a timer for myself to kind of get myself moving again. So let's set a 10 minute timer and see if we can do this in 10 minutes, something like that. So I'm gonna do that. I've got a little timer on my desk I use. Um, sometimes you just need snapping out of it. Um, so here I'm gonna say position of relative. Um, this is for everything in this section. And just to make sure we know, background color, we'll do like uh, accent of uh, 0.2. Something like that, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so now we know the area we're in. This will eventually be position of absolute, and this will be opacity zero eventually. Uh, for now, let's leave that off though, just so I can see where it's at, because we're gonna inset it zero, make it stretch the full section. And then we'll also do um, a pointer, pointer events, nope, cursor, a pointer. Okay, billing type, fake checkbox. Um, what do I want here? So this fake checkbox, oops, fake checkbox. I want this to have a pointer events of none like we did before. That, that way I'm not clicking on them and I get the actual cursor uh, where I want it everywhere, including on wherever the fake checkbox ends up being. So I think we're good here. So now I can take this opacity zero off, which means anywhere I click, it should actually set this off. Um, now the billing type, uh, this is where we're gonna set everything off display flex. Uh, gap var space small medium something like that um, monthly billing uh, what was the design like here monthly billing yearly billing 25 percent discount <clears throat> so billing type oh that's not what i want that was my label i guess let's just add a class here we'll call it billing type and this is what i'll select Right and right, okay. Fake checks box is gonna check box is gonna go right there. Uh, for now, let's grab twenty five percent discount. These were just styled a little bit differently, so we'll call this like uh, badge. And I'll just select the span inside the badge, I guess. So we'll grab the badge here, and let me move this, get rid of that, so I can go straight back and forth. Maybe I I'll switch these two. All right, we use two minutes. So I've got a little badge there. Let me actually move this over here so I can see it while I'm coding. So we'll say background color here. Um, this needs to be my um, HSL of um, discount, I think is what I called that. Yeah, so discount muted. Um, and then border radius 100% Vmax. Uh, should surround all that. We'll do padding here of our space, probably extra small. And maybe I should do it zero up and down, something like that. Okay. And then I think font size, I'm also going to do, oops, font size would be my var of font size 300. So a little bit smaller. Um, and I guess the 25% doesn't need to be in its own span. All right. So let's just do color would be my var um, HSL discount like that okay I think I'm good with that oh no you know what that span was hidden or shown depending on whether we are on mobile or desktop so let's do a media screen um, only how does this work I always forget media queries media only screen something We're on a time limit. Let's go. <laughs> time limit of our own imposing badge span. And what I'm going to do is say um, display none, right? So min width, we won't show it. Let's get rid of that. Okay, there we go. So is that what I want? Okay, the opposite of that. 
max. Okay, there we go. And I think maybe let's give it a little extra padding. So let's go like medium even. That might be a little too extreme, something like that, 25%. And then this also looks like it needs to be a font weight of bold. All right, that's good. Let's set, these things are set off correctly, I think. Um, do these all need to be smaller? Maybe they all need to be this. Something like that, okay. And let's also do gap medium is fine there. Let's do gap large, medium, that's fine. All right, so back over this way, uh, run out of time. Inside here, um, I can actually probably give this, um, this can just move outside of here like that. And that way it'll be spaced out the same amount. I think that's fine. And then maybe we'll just uh, margin write this thing at like a negative eight pixels and call it a day. Now that's not going to work. Let's just leave it alone. I think that spacing is, is fine. Yeah. Okay. So fake checkbox. Let's get to it. Um, right here. So I want this thing to have an imaginary height and width because I'm just kind of guessing on this, but let's say like height of 20 pixels, uh, width of 60 pixels, uh, background color here. I will use my neutral, maybe two, something like that. Um, the spacing I think is too big. between all these things. Um, it's fine, we'll figure it out. This probably should then be align items center. Okay, so at least it's something like that. Let's space this out. Okay, there we go. Maybe, maybe this should be small. We just have to figure out the font size uh, not working quite right. I think that's fine. Let's, let's take this to 25. Um, this needs a border. Order radius of 100 V max. And then uh, let's open up the design guide, style guide, to see what that was supposed to be. Discount, neutral, empty slider bar, toggle button. Help me out, empty background pricing toggle component. So 87% maybe. So we're gonna call that neutral four. Okay, so neutral four come on four oh I'm missing a parentheses okay um, then inside here oops go back let's take our fake checkbox and add a after pseudo element <clears throat> we need the content here to be nothing we'll set the width to 20 per 20 pixels and same thing for height. And we'll set the background color here to um, neutral one. All right. Um, display block, border. Actually, it's still right here. Make it 100% circle. And then we'll say a position of absolute, left of two pixels. Uh, this needs to be position relative. Okay, and then, yeah, left to two pixels, top of two pixels, three pixels. Now we're doing magic numbers. Let's go 20, 26. That looks better. Three pixels off here. Looks a little wide. Let's go 50. We got one minute and 27 seconds. All right. Um, we're going to toggle this based on the checkbox actual state. So right here, let's copy this down. And we're gonna say that when this is checked, I wanna grab the fake checkbox and I wanna grab its after element and I wanna move this uh, transform translate X 100% to start with. Check, oh, come on. This is the fake checkbox after. When this is checked, I want to grab the, is it just a general sibling? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> this looks too big too. So let's grab both these and maybe go to 18. Something like that. And then we'll go top of five, four. Sure. And same thing here. Okay, uh, let's look back over here real quick. See if I can't f finish this in our allotted fake time of 16 seconds. Um, input type checkbox. Oh, I have to go inside of our label. Okay. Eight seconds. Come on. <laughs> we'll go inside our label and then inside there. Check it. Hey! Timer's done. I didn't quite finish that because this isn't quite right, but, you know way faster than whatever pace I was going at before. Sometimes you just need snapping out of it. Uh, let's get rid of this now. And there we go. So now we got this thing snapping back and forth. Uh, now the focus on this thing is a little messed up. So let's just do a couple fine improvement uh, improvements here. So focus. Uh, when this is focused, I want to grab this here and I want to add a box shadow. Um, is that what I want? I just want the whole fake check box, I think. Yeah. So a box shadow of zero, 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 and like two pixels, HSL of accent. And we're gonna grab this here, oops, and do the same thing. And I guess I actually want this to be my dark, and I actually want this to be my neutral one. And this will be four or five, something like that. So then when I focus on it, Let's see if I can. Hmm. Let's see, like this. There we go. So you see how it's got like that little toggle now around it? And maybe we set this to neutral four so it's the same as that background. Yeah, there we go. So now you can actually see it that you're tabbing on it and toggle it back and forth. Last thing I want to do for this is to grab the after and we'll add a um, transition on the transform property. We'll do 200 milliseconds, and then for now I'll just do ease, and then let's figure out something uh, inside here to make it a little fancier. Checkbox, label, fake checkbox, after, here we go. In here I'm gonna grab this and move this around. Let's make this extra snappy, uh, even snappier. Oh yeah, <laughs> let's grab this then and drop this in here and let's put this down to like 100. Oh, extra snappy. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so now let's go ahead and, yeah, I mean, that gives me far more delight than it should. Let's also um, make this focus uh, visible so it just shows that border when you, uh, take your tab to it how satisfying is that though right okay um is that pretty much right mostly um i think we decided that this thing should be position absolute right because it's like sitting off to the side um so i guess we should also do that briefly badge 25 percent. so let's take this badge uh let's see billing type this would be position of relative. Um, justify content center as well, which, yeah, it wasn't quite. And then I can take my badge here and say position of absolute. We'll go uh, right zero, maybe. Uh, and then transform it. Transform, translate X, 100%. Is that what I want? Uh, I guess we could just go right negative 16 pixels. I've seen better things in my life. I'm not sure that's exactly what we want. But, I mean, anywhere I click on here, including over here, it's going to toggle all this, and that's good. But the way they've got this design is kind of stacked to the right, so maybe we just uh, end. We flex in this thing, and we remove all this, and that way it's just always at the end. Sure, that's probably the better thing to do, uh, which means we also don't need that. Okay, I think we're most, we gotta get moving. Okay, so over here we got a class button. Um, 
And let's go ahead and do this. Pull up my mobile design. Border radius will be 100% V max. Background color will be my accent. And I'm hoping it doesn't take me, oops, keep doing accent, this is dark. Hoping it doesn't take me as long as five minutes. Um, color will be neutral. Oh, you know what, it was dark. Nope, it was muted something, muted light. It was the only one that was that color. Um, font size looks like my 300 too. So we'll shrink that down a bit. Um, outline will be, oops, I mean border will be none. And let's see, max width will be fit content. Like that. Um, let's see, let's just, since we're already here, we'll just justify this itself to the center. And then let's add some padding of var space of small. Something like that. And then side to side. Um, yeah, let's just do it this way. Space of 3XL. I mean, that looks pretty close to me. We'll do 4XL just for giggles. This probably needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe. Sure, that looks fine to me. Um, let's also add a cursor or pointer. And then we'll say button when it is focused. I want my outline color to be none or transparent. And I'll add my own custom one. Because if I don't have this, when I focus in on it with the tab key, it gets this real light blue color and that's hard to see. So I want to replace that with my own focus visible um, where I will steal what we just did up top box shadow. Um, fake check box. Is this what I want? Yeah, let's steal this. Okay, um, so we'll steal this and I'm just going to change this to my neutral one and this to my dark. So now when I tab to it, you see I get that. Let's also maybe increase this a bit, so we'll say three and six, and that way it's a little bit more dramatic. And I also want to transform, no, transition on the transform. Form, we'll do 100 milliseconds, and then I'll grab my cubic bezier curve and drop that bad boy in there. So now when I come and I tab to it, maybe let's make this 200. Transform. Box shadow, idiot. All right, <laughs> there we go. Now it kind of snaps up. I like that. All right, extra snappy. I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's also, I guess, grab the hover state. And here we'll change the background color. They don't really give me this, but might as well do, <clears throat> do the whole thing. So we'll say dark 0.8. So now when I hover over this, I get that as well, which means I could probably just tack that on here and change this on the background color. Yeah, extra snappy. Okay, I like that. Okay, I think that's mostly it. We've got this thing to figure out still, and then I'm gonna call this a day. Um, let's change all these focus states to focus visible. Um, type checkbox. Uh, let's find. I don't have anything else with this, so let's just copy this up. And we're just going to grab the... Oh, no, it's just a fake checkbox. So, um, yeah. So let's look for the fake checkbox by itself, and we'll add the same thing in here for the box shadow. Uh, transition box shadow. That way it gets, it gets the same kind of snappiness. Extra snappy. All right, and box shadow... Um, let's see the card, no, fake range thumb, this is what I want, so let's grab the thumb down here, we'll do the same thing, box shadow, oops, and then we'll also do a transition on the box shadow, so that when it, yeah, gets a little snappy, I like that, okay, last thing we're going to do is, I think that's done for mobile, right, looks like maybe top and bottom of the card, need a little bit more padding, <clears throat> so, Bar space 2XL maybe, maybe 4XL, let's get serious about it, 3XL, okay. So I think we're going to call that good, I mean everything's functional still, this all works, um, start my trial works, okay, oh five minutes, I forgot, I forgot about our timer. Um, 
so the last thing to do is just to make sure that this looks fine on desktop so let's move this over here and basically what we've got is this this and this that we need to differentiate on um, so I guess I can just set these out in some kind of grid container that's probably the easiest thing to do I think so let's come back over here and figure out where those are at slider wrapper page views card so let's see where's the slider wrapper include the range the fake range the track the thumb the amount so it's everything that's what we need all right so let's grab the slider wrapper wrapper i don't have a slider wrapper okay then um range wrapper where's the range wrapper oh down there okay so let's grab the slider wrapper well the display of grid um, which shouldn't change anything right now um, but let's see how do I want to set this up I guess I'll just have two columns right yeah so let's just do two columns so grid template columns uh, two FR I think that works and then slider wrapper oh so I kind of messed this up I think if I do it No, no, no. Slider wrapper is what I'm already in. So I've got inside here as children. Let's just make sure. Amount wrapper. That's this. Range wrapper. And that. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, yeah. 1FR and 1FR. I just didn't do two. <laughs> you got to do like that, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so now we'll set these off here in a second. <clears throat> Uh, let's grab should I position these let's do that instead so let's do grid template areas I think is what you call this and grid template areas pretty sure that's what you call that it's been a little bit of time since I actually named these things yeah okay so just down below here we're gonna have set these up for um, mobile first so we'll name these sections in a second but for now we'll just call this something like um, page views um, something else and something else this will be like billing and this will be slider okay and then that should just set them off just yeah that should be fine what are these things named now um, page views nice Range wrapper and amount wrapper. Not the most consistent naming I've ever done in my life, but let's give this a name. Grid name. Grid area, I think, of page views. And does this have to be a string? Grid area. I don't recall. No, it doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so grid area is page views. Um, what was my other one called? Range wrapper. Uh, grid area slider. Let's call this range since um, we were already calling it range right here. And then billing would be the amount wrapper. So amount wrapper. Now we're going to give a grid area of billing to. Okay, now what I can do is um, grid area grid template areas there we go let's grab this I mean we don't really even need to define this here I we could just define all of this in a media query so let's go to the bottom and don't we have like a yeah so let's pull this down to the very bottom down here um, and I guess we could just paste this bad boy right in here and here what I'm going to want is on desktop, I want this to say page views and next to it, billing. Now, what was this thing called? Is this in its section? This is the amount. Okay. So this is the billing, yeah. So then I want billing next to this. I think like this maybe. And then range and range. 
Hey, kind of. <laughs> um, so when you're small, this should work. When you get, or when you're big, let's see. Oh, that's the opposite. I forgot. Okay, so let's, let's switch this up. And this should probably be more like 768 or something anyhow. Um, and then we'll paste this thing in here. Okay, so when you're small, that should be just fine. When you get bigger, um, aside from these things need to be needing to be aligned center, I think we should be set. Maybe the easiest thing to do would just be to grab the page views. Uh, page views. And just set this to justify, nope, align self of center. Because it shouldn't affect the mobile, and then there it should be fine. Okay, so I think that is fine. Um, it doesn't really ever get any bigger than that, but is that what this is supposed to look like? Yeah, just supposed to get a lot bigger, it looks like. Um, oh, and these are supposed to stack, and there's a line. Ah, I thought we were done. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's figure those out and then we'll be good. Um, this is the problem when you don't look at your designs a lot. Oh, that's right. Cause we said we were going to do it on the checkbox wrapper. So let's come over here, find this and we'll say uh, margin top of 16 pixels or var space large, which I think is 24 pixels. Um, all of this is only on the desktop though. No, it's on both. Okay. That makes it easier. Um, so we'll say border top var one pixel solid. Um, we'll say neutral three, maybe something like that. Um, now this is kind of annoying because this bar itself has to stretch the full amount. So maybe what I should do is set this to a uh, position of relative and then have this thing be an after element. That way I can kind of style it how I want or before, I guess is fine too. So let's do that. So we'll say before content will be nothing. Um, and border top a width of 100%. Um, let's say margin inline will be negative, whatever my padding was, uh, which you can calculate off of these variables. So calc variable times negative one. Oh, it died. Where'd it go? Um, oh, I didn't add a semicolon is all. Okay. That didn't seem to do anything. I want it to be negative in both directions. Oh, it needs to be pixels at the end. No, it's already pixels. Negative one pixel. Okay, let's just manually type it in. Negative 16 pixels. Um, it's position absolute first. And then let's just stretch it. Position absolute. Um, margin top. Oops. Needs to go back up top here then. And this probably needs to be more like extra large. Uh, then let's position this thing. Um, uh, let's do with 100 and let's do like 150. We'll just cap it on the card. So we'll grab the card and set an overflow um, to hidden. And that way it caps it. And that then I don't have to do weird percentages and stuff. Um, so let's look at the fours. I know there's one somewhere. Here we go. Um, top would be zero. Um, let's add padding top. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Checkbox marker also then needs to be display a flex. And nope, not the checkbox wrapper, whatever the parent of that is. Which probably also means this whole thing See, this needs to be, yeah, so we can do that. Um, display a flex, um, flex wrap of wrap. And then what I'm gonna do is put all of this 
These are all my check marks right here. We'll just put these in a div. Um, and I guess we should also class name flex small. Will that put it in the middle? No. Uh, grid small, I mean. Not quite. So let's just say check marks. And while we're already here, check check mark wrapper, check mark wrapper. Let's grab our check marks. I'll say um, display grid and place whoop, uh, place items center. Uh, we also need to justify itself to the center, which I guess I could do with the checkbox wrapper as well. Did I do that? Place item center, display flex. This needs to be justify content center now. Justify content center. There we go. All right, and then when I get smaller, there we go. We need to get to the side. It's a flex container, so. And these are, this is a block element, so I just need to set it. Um, maybe on my bigger screens. So let's do that. So we'll say on bigger screens, this needs to go flex one, one and 50% or 45%, something like that. All right, I think that should work. If I get bigger, it does nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's check marks. <clears throat> Is that what I want? It's really hard to see with this stuff so big. Um, this is a little section. Oh, this needs to go around everything. There we go. Okay. So smaller, smaller, a snap up. The other thing this button needs then um, is to make sure that it's height. Button. We'll do max height will also be fit content. Shouldn't that work? Max content. Not sure about that, but I guess I could do it on the parent too. So let's grab the checkbox, check marks, wrapper, and this could be uh, align items center. Okay, so that works when we get above a certain amount. It just snaps out naturally. And I don't even need this uh, media query down here. Um, yeah. So let's checkbox wrapper one more time because the other thing I should probably do is actually probably add this down here and change this out to uh, justify justify content space between. So on bigger screen sizes, it spreads all the way out as far as it can. All right, let's make sure, oops, let's make sure that this thing is closed or formatted. I'm not sure why I have to keep setting a default formatter. All right, so now when I get on bigger screen sizes, it should try to space out. But since the card isn't getting bigger, it's not spacing out. But anyhow, that works. Um, maybe I should go to the card and set a width of like 800 or 650 pixels, something like that, and a max width of 100%. And that way it can get bigger if it needs to and reveal anything else that we messed up. <laughs> so um, let's do like 500 pixels, 400 pixels, something like that, 450. Okay, so this thing is in a line center. Input billing type, oops, what is this thing called? And then we'll be done with this. Billing wrapper. Let's grab this billing wrapper, display grid, sure, place items, center. And I think all the rest of that looks okay to me. Um, get bigger. This grid check marks wrapper. It should justify content space between. Oh, I'm not getting big enough. So. Maybe let's just back this bad boy off to like 600 pixels. All right, there we go. So now it spaces out, tries to use up all the available space. I think that's mostly done. Um, oops, let's close down this sidebar here. 
close down this stuff. Let's check it. All right. So somehow we broke everything. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's go back to our index CSS. Let's look at the card. Um, let's say max width of 100%. Let's set this to a, let's just get rid of this. Okay, there we go. And then what I'll do is maybe grab this and drop it on the bottom. So we'll grab the card here and set it like that. Oops. Okay, that way it still looks okay on mobile. There's a better way to fix that, but I gotta get going <laughs> all my day. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Snaps out, let's go to desktop. And last thing I'm noticing here is that this um, thing right here isn't quite working. So the background image here, I'll say right of zero as well. No, width of 100%, there we go. Okay, so I think that works. Um, I guess we should set that to fill probably. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'm, I'm gonna call that good. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I know some of you came in and out and uh, you know, we took our time because we added some extra cool stuff like um, these hover states and snappiness and we changed this um, to month and year based on what it was clicked on, which was not part of the original uh, brief, but um, somehow I also messed this up too. But I'm not going to worry about it right now because i got to get going, so <laughs> you can figure that out. I'll add the code to GitHub, and you can play around with it. But little, like, modals and components like this seem really easy, and then you start playing with them. And, like, overall, it's not that difficult to do. But there's a lot of little edge use cases. Like, you want to make sure that you've got uh, keyboard events, and you want to make sure that, you know, those are the kinds of things that, of course, you could just throw up a design real quickly. But that's what you want is a good user experience. And so it requires you to think through all the different use cases how that might look, how the tabbing looks, how it feels, how snappy this is, am I right? Um, so that just seems delightful. It needs like a sound effect or something now. But anyhow, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, I will, um, let's see, I am actually in the process of moving, so I might have to take a break from the channel here in a little bit. I've, I've recorded a couple ahead of time um, that I hope will be a help uh, as well. But anyhow, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you sometime on the next one. All right, thanks, bye.